Wednesday, July 29, 1998. It's been one of the driest summers on record for the province of British Columbia's central interior region. Yet no one could have anticipated the extent of coming events. The largest evacuation in the province's history. Summer of 98 it was hot, El Nino thought. No drop of rain, no whisper. Of At 3 p.m., a single lightning strike into the forested upper reaches of Silver Creek in the Fly Hills outside of Salmon Arm sparks a small fire. In 10 minutes, the fire grows to one hectare. Within 15 minutes of the initial report, heavy equipment is dispatched to the area. Good afternoon, it's 4 o'clock Pacific, 5 o'clock Mountain Time. A lightning strike has started a fire on the Fly Hills near Silver Creek. Smoke from the fire is clearly visible from Salmon Arm, but the fire itself appears to be small at this time. The fire control center has been notified. No word on whether or not a crew has been dispatched yet to combat the fire. Difficult terrain and slash from beetle-killed timber hamper initial assault efforts. The Kamloops Fire Center for the BC Forest Service assigns a team to drop water on the fire. By day's end, 10 hectares are ablaze. Though ample fuel and dry temperatures are present, there is no immediate sense of alarm. It's 11 o'clock, 12 Mountain Time. The temperature this hour, 26 in the Fairmont, Ivermeer, and Salmon Arm areas. It's 23 in both Revelstoke and Golden. The BC Forest Service is scrambling after overnight storms sparked 15,000 lightning strikes in the southern interior and Kootenays. Provincial Fire Information Officer Wendy Stewart says one forest fire on the Fly Hills and Silver Creek areas of concern. It covers 20 hectares, but it's near 200 rural homes. By Thursday, the fire has doubled in size. A Martin Mars water bomber is called to the area from Sprout Lake on Vancouver Island. By late morning, the four-engine aircraft skims the surface of Salmon Arm Bay of Shushwap Lake, taking on water at a rate in excess of a ton per second. Within 25 seconds, the plane labors off the water loaded with almost 6,000 gallons of water. That evening, the fire size is held to 20 hectares, but rising winds now fan the flames. Early Friday morning, a fire camp is set up at Panorama Ranch in Glen Eden, north of the fire. Two helicopters with water buckets join the fight, and a 20-person crew work the ground. Fly Hills fire in the Silver Creek area jumped the cat trail last night. Forestry spokesperson Mitzi Bouchelle says while there was some advancement, the fire didn't take any major run. It is heading north and they're hoping to stop the escape with, uh, with uh, air, air power. That Yet despite the doubled effort, the fire itself doubles. By morning of the next day, the fire has grown to 40 hectares. In response, more resources are recruited so that before the day is out, Two firefighting crews, six helicopters, and a barrage of heavy equipment worked the fire. Unfortunately, the Martin Mars must return to Sprout Lake for refueling because an adequate docking and fueling system has yet to be established locally for the giant aircraft. It's Sunday. Fire crews have managed to hold the fire to 41 hectares. Efforts are scaled back as dropping winds and temperatures are forecast. Unfortunately, the unexpected occurs. Winds pick up and stoke the fire, bringing with it a renewed sense of urgency. Statistics begin to mount. The following day, the fire has grown to 45 hectares. The Martin Mars bomber resumes work, while approximately 60 firefighters are now involved on the ground. As the fire advances, they are ordered out of the fire's path because the steep terrain limits possible escape routes. Work is relegated to the perimeter as the fire again doubles in size in just a few hours. Temperatures hit 39 degrees Celsius. The high temperature and steady winds stoke the fire and make it impossible for ground crews to reach the heart of the blaze. Meanwhile, a locally run emergency operations center is set up in the Salmon Arm Fire Hall. The EOC is established to coordinate efforts from assistance groups that include the fire commissioner's office, the Provincial Emergency Program, Emergency Social Services, RCMP, BC Forest Service, and the Silver Creek and Salmon Arm Fire Departments. 
Two Martin Mars bombers, other aircraft, and ground crews continue working the Fly Hills fire this hour with an eye on approaching thunderstorms with accompanying winds. Reported in the Sorrento area now, forestry still estimates its size at 300 hectares. Spokesman Ann Ferdinand. The weather forecast for today um, may pose some difficulties where uh, the forecast is calling for stronger winds from the south at about 20 to 30 k's per hour. Uh, those winds do to come in at around uh, late afternoon, early evening. So that could lead to the potential for some increased fire activity later today. And the winds... Be ready. Be ready to evacuate. The fire has been burning for a week now. Windy conditions push the fire to 300 hectares. Seven helicopters focus their efforts on the advancing fire, dropping fire retardant at the head of the blaze. The retardant, a mixture of water and ammonium phosphate, reacts chemically with burning material, slowing the rate of burning and cooling the fire's intensity so the firefighters can get closer to work on the dry fuel at the base of the flames. As the fire continues to spread, organizers face a new situation. Approximately 1,500 people live in the vicinity of Silver Creek. The advancing fire now threatens both property and lives. Over 200 residents from 60 homes in the immediate area are put on evacuation Hello? notice and told to be ready to leave with 10 minutes notice. Strong and gusty winds are forecast. Residents begin to pack up their personal essentials, documents and memorabilia. Some have the forethought to photograph or videotape the contents of their homes. The next day begins with the fire burning three kilometers from 60 homes in Silver Creek. Official reports continue to speak in terms of control and containment. But by mid-afternoon, a cold front moves in and gives the fire enough energy that it begins to create its own winds. The ensuing firestorm creates gusts in excess of 90 kilometers per hour. Salmon Arm Fire Chief Ken Tebow puts out a call for help to 16 fire halls throughout the British Columbia interior. Within hours, 134 men and 17 fire trucks arrive on the scene. As well, over 500 people are evacuated from the community of Silver Creek. Volunteers, many of whom are residents, rally together with firefighters and forestry workers to save homes and lives. A genuine sense of community develops as residents pitch in to help one another with arrangements for pets and livestock. Phones ring off the hook at the local SPCA as volunteers with trailers pair with farmers and ranchers who wish to move their livestock from the valley in case the fire spreads to the valley bottom. This in turn prompts calls for pasture and feed for the exiled herds of cattle, horses, goats and entire roosts of various fowl. winds have caused a change in the direction of the Fly Hills forest fire and people are now being evacuated from the danger zone. Network Radio just spoke with spokesperson Ann Ferdinand a short while ago. Detective at 13.35, Bob Hickey, Regional Fire Commissioner, has issued uh, an evacuation order. Okay, so residents there are being evacuated from their homes at this time then? That's correct. That applies to those homes between 70th Avenue and Johnson Road. RCMP are out there. They will be delivering uh, the official notice to those homes. Approximately 60 homes and estimated 200 people within that area. Pacific, 6 o'clock Mountain. 
Conditions are rapidly changing as the Fly Hills forest fire continues to grow. A shift in the wind has forced the fire downslope towards a number of homes along Salmon River Road. The evacuation order that was implemented at 1.30 this afternoon by Regional Fire Commissioner Bob Hickey. Uh, meantime, Branch Flower Road out at Silver Creek has been completely evacuated. We have reports that there are homes there on fire and that the fire has jumped the valley over to Mount Ida. A short while ago, we received this phone call from a gentleman... There are conflicting scene. reports as to the damage but the destruction of several homes in the Silver Creek area is confirmed as the fire races east across the valley bottom and up the steep adjacent slopes of Mount Ida. Smoke hangs in the air throughout Salmon Arm, making it necessary for residents with asthma and other respiratory conditions either to stay indoors or evacuate the area. As a precaution against a worst case scenario, all 65 patients of the Shushwap Lake General Hospital are evacuated. 40 acute care and 25 extended care patients are transported to hospitals in Vernon, Armstrong and Enderby. Traffic strings along the valley bottom road like a sparkling jeweled necklace as emergency vehicles, farm vehicles, stock trailers and personal vehicles overloaded with possessions file out of the valley. Hey Jen, can you get fire information for us please? Official reports hold a new tone Thursday. The fire is over 800 hectares. Panorama Fire Camp is evacuated, and with more hot, dry weather forecast, the long-term prognosis is not good. Upwards of 1,500 people have now been evacuated. 20 homes are reported to have been destroyed, two more seriously damaged. In all, 36 properties have been affected as the fire seems to randomly leapfrog a searing path down Fly Hills across the valley, jumping Salmon River and the highway, all the while consuming everything it comes in contact with. In very few hours, the fire line has rolled across the valley and is scorching its way into the wooded slopes of Mount Ida with a vengeance. Aggressive plans are in the making to protect the town of Salmon Arm. It was like a war. And you just, it was panic. Get out, get the animals out. It is a devastating day for the Heiser family. This is all that's left of their home. It's one of approximately 20 homes lost so far in the Salmon Arm area. Arlene and Tom Melanson are checking on their farm. Tom risked his life fighting the fire, but had to be taken to hospital for smoke inhalation, and now there is little left of his barns and equipment but smoldering ruins. We spent 20 years here building all this up, and, and it just took about five minutes, and it was gone. The fire has grown to over 3,000 hectares. Yet despite the impending danger and oppressive smoke, a tremendous spirit of cooperation emerges as people rally support for evacuees, volunteers, and emergency teams. Merely providing food and drink to these groups is a formidable task. The fire crews alone have by this time consumed many thousands of sandwiches, and a committed group of volunteers from the Salvation Army and the Food Bank work tirelessly to collect and prepare food for both emergency personnel and evacuees. Donations roll in from local grocery stores, small businesses, and larger chains. Even other communities as far west as Vancouver and as far east as Ontario offer support. The long-range forecast calls for high winds by August 10th, which threaten to push the fire over Mount Ida's north face into Salmon Arms residential area. As heavy equipment works around the clock to build a fire break encompassing Mount Ida's inferno, extreme contingency plans are made that include the streets themselves as fire breaks if the first line of defense should fail. As the sun rose today, smoke from the Silver Creek fires hung over Shuswap Lake and over all of Salmon Arm. The smoke is much worse today than yesterday, and the fires much bigger than anyone thought. Yesterday, officials said the fires covered 850 hectares. They changed that figure drastically today, saying 4,500 hectares have now been burned. I've seen some very difficult fires and I've seen some extreme rates of spread, but this certainly was the most extreme fire behavior that I have witnessed. 
The fire has grown to over 4,700 hectares, and a layer of dust and ash is settling from the pall of smoke that hangs over Salmon Arm. In anticipation of the high winds forecast for Monday, 100 military personnel arrive over the weekend. It is Sunday, August 9th. The arrival of BC Premier Glenn Clark is more than diplomatic. That's why we took the extraordinary measure to do the evac evacuation. The Premier declares an official state of emergency, and in doing so, makes the resources of the Provincial Emergency Program available, clearing the way for an evacuation order to be given to 7,000 residents of Salmon Arm living south of the Trans-Canada Highway. Additional emergency teams from across the province converge on the area. Among them are 13 fire trucks and 54 firefighters from the Lower Mainland. The largest evacuation in British Columbia's history is underway. Six reception centers operating 24 hours a day are set up throughout the BC interior under the direction of the Provincial Emergency Program in the towns of Vernon, Kamloops, Kelowna, Revelstoke, Salmon Arm and Sycamus. Evacuees are asked to register with one of these centers for the sake of rescue efforts as this helps to address the flood of inquiries coming in from concerned individuals living outside the area who are unable to reach friends or relatives because of jammed or downed telephone lines. The community waits for the expected winds of Monday, but mercifully they do not arrive. The cold front passes through but does not dip low enough to affect the fire. The list of personnel and equipment on hand reads like the shopping list for a major war zone. There are 12 helicopters, two Martin Mars bombers, 77 pieces of heavy equipment, 100 military troops, over 250 municipal firefighters with 50 fire trucks, 100 RCMP, over 100 search and rescue personnel, 32 paramedics, 8 ambulances, and a medevac helicopter. Federated Cooperative, the local lumber mill, and a primary employer of the community has committed a total of 8 Caterpillar bulldozers, 7 skidders and tankers, four excavators, seven low bed trailers, 24 fire pumps, miles of fire hose, and all the fire trailers and hand tools they have. On top of that, many of Federated staff are freed up to serve firefighting and evacuation efforts. Early estimates put the cost of this effort at approximately $550,000 per day. The fire is now burning across 5,000 hectares. On behalf of the citizens of Salmon Arbor, I just can't extend uh, enough thank you for the uh, not only our local department, but all the, the other departments that uh, responded to uh, the potential disaster in Salmon Arm. I mean, you just look at the uh, where the trucks have come from and, and how quickly you responded. It was just overwhelming. Firestorm 98 enters its third week. By Tuesday, an all-out effort on the part of firefighters, coupled with more stable weather, have begun to tip the scales. Some crews have been working for two weeks straight. Though much work remains, the exhausted fire crews and volunteers are put on a rotational shift. The evacuation order is lifted in all parts of Salmon Arm except for the southwest quadrant of town. Still, the town remains on a 10-minute evacuation alert, and the fire, which has grown to 5,200 hectares, is still considered serious. Back in Silver Creek, Families begin to trickle back to their properties, uncertain if they will find their home and possessions intact or incinerated. There are also lingering fears that without rain, soon the threat of fire will again return. The fire boss himself warns that the fire could continue to burn for another two months. The following day, there is a turn for the better. Cooler temperatures and calm air raise hopes that the worst is over. Firefighters, military troops and volunteers continue their efforts by strengthening the cat guard around the fire and battling hot spots at the base of the Fly Hills and in the bowl atop Mount Ida. Meanwhile, residents begin their own battle with insurance adjusters. From among the ashes, help of another kind emerges. The inevitable philosophers and armchair fire bosses seeking to either find meaning or lay blame for this natural disaster. Fire officials maintain that everything that could have been done was done and welcome public calls for an event review. There's always discontent uh, 
uh, by some people thinking that they know how to manage the fire. I have every confidence that the people who are deploying the aircraft are doing so uh, when it's appropriate to deploy it. Though the fire is reported to be burning steadily, the winds are replaced with an air of optimism because of the gains made earlier in the week. On Thursday, a controlled burn is applied in the Fly Hills as a preventive measure. Mop-up operations are underway with ground crews scattered both inside and along the fire perimeter. Water bombings are run exclusively in the afternoon to avoid striking people on the ground with the liquid payload. A direct hit of that much water and retardant from the air can easily cripple a person. Results from digital imaging and mapping of the area bring a revised report that the fire has burned over 6,300 hectares within a perimeter of 58 kilometers. Mop-up operations continue to battle hot spots and the occasional flare-ups that the day's wind stirs up. On Saturday, August 15th, the evacuation order is finally lifted from the last area on the southwest quadrant of Salmon Arm and the Salmon Valley, though the 10-minute alert remains. For many, the return is a simple matter of turning the front door key and picking up their lives where they left off. For others, it is a matter of starting all over again. Slowly, life returns to normal for the countless volunteers that have served during this disaster. The numbers of resident volunteers that have answered the call for help are beyond counting. The array of organizations that pitched in is in itself impressive. Locally, these include emergency program volunteers, Shushwap Search and Rescue, the SPCA, and local media like CKXR Radio who kept the community informed with up-to-the-minute reports at crucial times. Other local groups were the Salvation Army and Food Bank the Salmon Arm and Silver Creek Fire Departments, and scores of other volunteers from fire departments across the province and other parts of the country. Help has also come from the District of Salmon Arm and the Columbia Shushwap Regional District. Amazingly, the locally initiated Fire Relief Fund receives donations of $180,000, with an additional $35,000 delivered through the Salvation Army. Provincial assistance has come from such agencies as the Ministry of Forests, the BC Ambulance Service, Ministry of Transportation and Highways, Provincial Emergency Program, Office of the Fire Commissioner, Ministry of Human Resources and Children and Families, and the North Okanagan Regional Health District. Nationally, the RCMP, the Canadian Armed Forces, and the Red Cross are invaluable in their roles to ensure a safe and orderly evacuation. Communities, businesses, agencies, and forces have pulled together to minimize the impact of what is now known as Firestorm 98, the largest evacuation in the history of British Columbia.